So this year, the, um, the board asked me to talk about uh, uh, an argument related to minimal invasive surgery, which is my uh, field of interest. And then I choose to talk about uh, a brand new treatment modalities for uh, BPH, which is a TPLA, is a tram transperineal ablation of the prostate. And I'll show you data regarding a study that you are doing uh, uh, comparing uh, TPLA versus uh, TURP. So the reason why I choose uh, this brand new uh, uh, BPH treatment modalities is because um, I basically am an um, oncologic surgeon, minimal invasive surgeon. I've grown up as a laparoscopist, and then I moved to robotic surgery. But then when I became chief in my hospital, I had to manage a lot of different urological conditions, and BPH was one of the, 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 the main urological condition I, ha I had to deal with. And also, as we can see in this uh, image, the, the, the burden of benign prostatic uh, hyperplasia in 2004 countries and territories from 2000 to up to uh, 2019 uh, shows that basically the age standardized prevalence of BPH uh, tends to grow dramatically from uh, almost 6,500 per uh, 100,000 men in Eastern Europe to uh, around uh, 1,000 per 100,000 men in North Africa and Middle East. So the absolute burden is, uh, is uh, <clears throat> rising in a, an alarming rate in most of the world, particularly in low-income and middle-income countries that are currently undergoing rapid demographic and, uh, and epidemiological changes. So how we manage BPH? There are so many different treatment modalities. Uh, we know uh, holmium laser nucleation, tulium laser nucleation, bipolar TURP, redzum, aqua beam. How we deal with it? What we choose? So, uh, as shown from uh, the uh, EAU uh, guidelines, which is the one I refer to, uh, up to date, there are so many different techniques. And there's no one technique which is good for every kind of patient. Is the patient suitable for a general anesthesia? Yes or not? Is the patient using uh, anticoagulant or, or, or uh, antiplatelet therapy? And what is the prostate volume? Is a small prostate, medium prostate, is a large prostate? Large what means? Is uh, 80 um, uh, milliliters, 100, 20, uh, 20 uh, 200, or, or, or what? So we have to choose between these different modalities. And also one of the main problems we have to face today is uh, the request for the patient for uh, ejacul uh, um, ejaculation sparing technique. So preservation of the ejaculatory function is today a major issue for BPH treatment, especially when considering surgery in younger and sexual active patients. So for the reason, absolutely, the research sh should focus on surgical techniques that today guarantee a good compromise between effective resolution of lower, lower urinary tract symptoms and the lowest impact on sexual well-being. So how can we reach this result? First of all, we can modify our ejaculation sparing endoscopic technique. So TURP, OLEP, TULEP, and also there are uh, on a market brand new ablative and or non-ablative techniques. We talk about Eurolift, uh, Redzum, aquablation, uh, prostatic artery embolization, the IT in the stent, and uh, finally the TPLA, which is the one I will present to you today. Uh, of course, I know that in the United States, Eurolift uh, is, uh, is uh, one of the main modalities that maybe you use for ejaculation sparing technique. In Italy, it, this, um, this didn't happen mainly because uh, of the cost of the procedures. So we pay about uh, 500 euros for each clip, and at least you need four clips. So the cost is going to be around 2,000 euros. And we gain back from the health system about 2,300 euros. So it is not feasible for us to propose this treatment. That's why we are looking for uh, different treatment modalities when the patient asks for a uh, ejaculation sparing technique. So this is an experience in literature with the modified uh, um, normal laser that we use in the normal practice. This is an experience with the ejaculation sparing uh, tulium laser enucleation of the prostate. We can clearly see from data that we can reach very good results in terms of uh, maximum flow rate with uh, 
results around 23 milliliters per second stable during the months up to uh, six months and also after, after death. But uh, the, the, the percentage of patients that spare ejaculation is uh, related to the prostate volume and range from 60 to 80 percent of patients. So basically means that uh, a big part of this population will lose the ejaculation and we cannot guarantee anything before the procedures. So we have to tell to the patient that it is pretty feasible that they, that they will lose the ejaculation. This is also a systematic review uh, reported ejaculatory dysfunction in clinical trials evaluating minimal invasive alternative um, treatment modalities. And uh, what we have seen uh, that uh, um, for this procedure, so Eurolift, Redzum, uh, prostatic artery embolization, and aquablation, the only procedures who really prevent uh, retrograde ejaculation is the Eurolift with 0%. Zero, zero percent. Uh, that tend to increase uh, up to 13% uh, with the uh, PAE and up to almost 20% with the uh, aquablation. Uh, Redzum, I want to say that it's still under investigation because there are studies that showing that the, uh, one study reported 4.4 uh, percentage of uh, retrograde ejaculation, but the more that uh, uh, we used to use the resume, we see more and more uh, uh, ejaculatory dysfunction after the technique. So now uh, I want to present this new modality. The name is uh, Soractelite. And, uh, Soractelite is a transperineal laser ablation using this uh, echo laser system, which is a novel minimal invasive thermoablative technique based on laser tissue interac interaction. The name of the treatment is uh, 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 Soracte, comes from um, uh, an, an, the name of an Italian mountain, also named at the incipit of uh, the Horace poem, where there was a monastery in which the monk Nonnoso is considered the protector of, uh, uh, from kidney disease. And also light, which in one end refers to the lightweight uh, microinvasiveness of the treatment and the, in the other end to the therapeutic source. So the clinical application of soratolite is, is uh, both for prostate and kidney, and for prostate it may be used for BPH treatment and also for focal treatment. So TPLA consisted in uh, uh, transperineal inser insertion of uh, optical fibers and delivery of laser energy for several minutes, which cause thermal destruction of prostatic tissue followed by progressive reduction in prostatic volume. Uh, so these are the treatment phases. And uh, the patient is uh, in a lithotomy position, and then we place the catheter uh, with a cold saline irrigation uh, to control the urethral uh, temperature. And uh, pretreatment planning is uh, crucial and uh, is done using a transperineal ultrasound. The procedures may be accomplished uh, in, on an outpatient basis, just with the local anesthesia uh, for the skin and for the periplostatic plexus with lidocaine 2%. And uh, if needed, we can use conscious sedation. One or two fibers per side are used depending on a prostatic volume and morphology. And the first ablation is conducted uh, with um, 1,800 joules and 3 watt per fiber. And pullback technique may be used depending on prostatic volume and patient compliance. Uh, this is exactly what we need to do the treatment. So basically just the needles uh, for introducing the, the laser, the anesthesia, and uh, nothing more than this. Uh, this is uh, an image of a transversal view and longitudinal view of planning the fiber uh, position. And uh, it, it's crucial, the, the, the planning, because we have to be aware to stay at least 15 millimeters from the bladder neck with the tip of the laser, and uh, about uh, 8 to uh, 10 millimeters far from the urethra and from the prostatic capsula. And this is a short video showing how it works. So this is the uh, software interface, and uh, uh, also the laser, the laser may be used for different conditions. Uh, one of the main is for uh, uh, treatment of uh, uh, thyroid nodules, but uh, uh, urology is coming on, uh, is already came on the market. Uh, this is how we 
choose to place the, the needle. And uh, the circle that you see in blue is uh, a simulation of the uh, area that we are going to treat. So we can definitely plan exactly where we want to place. The, the, the needle are inserted uh, via a transperineal route. And for us, it's pretty simple because we have extensive experience with transperineal biopsies. So it's not a big deal, but uh, you can use also a grid to help you in placing at the beginning of the, the, the needle. And then once the needle in place and we have to check exactly the position, we can place the fiber in. And then once we activate, the procedure is going to take no longer than 20 minutes. So uh, we can check, especially at the beginning, just for research reason, uh, what happened after the procedures. And once the gas and the micro bubbles are, absor are absorbed one or two hours later, the coagulated adhere can be visualized using the ultrasound imaging or contrast agents. And uh, the maximum extension of necrosis area is found uh, 72 hours after treatment. So what are the evidence in literature? This is the first clinical trial that have been published. And um, it is about, uh, it, it, um, uh, these are uh, results after three months on a cohort of 18 patients. And the results have shown that there was a, a pretty good increase in uh, flow rate with a very good decrease in symptom scores. So the study uh, basically demonstrated that TPLA was a feasible and safe treatment for patients with lower urinary symptoms. And the results were uh, good after three months. So this was just the initial experience. This second study presents an experience of a large cohort of patients, of 160 patients, and uh, uh, they still confirm the pretty good results in terms of flow rate, flow rate and decrease in symptom score scale. And also they have shown a very low percentage of complication. They had just seven out of 160 patients uh, uh, grade one complication and just one grade three complication. So so particularly, they had three patient experience uh, transient hematuria, and three had acute urinary retention, and one had orchitis. And uh, the major complication was the prostatic abscess uh, that was uh, successfully drained. And this is another experience published in 2019 on European urology uh, uh, that shown uh, uh, stable results after six months and uh, also again a very small rate of uh, complication, just one out of 21 uh, patients with a prostatic abscess. So the, the aim of uh, our study was to compare TPLA versus QRP, which is still the gold standard for treating uh, medium, uh, small medium uh, prostate sites. And uh, uh, this is the study. So uh, in a single center, prospective randomized open label study uh, where consecutive patients uh, uh, were enrolled for the study in a period between January 2020 and September 21. Uh, so a total of uh, 55 patients were enrolled. Uh, we um, excluded patients with very large prostatic volume, so uh, larger than uh, 100 cc, or patient with a third lobe, or patient with an indwelling catheter, and then we randomized. A group A, 26 patients were assigned to TPLA, and in the group B, 50, uh, 55 patient, uh, 25 patients were enrolled for uh, TRP. Uh, so our um, sorry, uh, primary endpoint was to evaluate change in ejaculatory function at one month after surgery. And second endpoints uh, were a comparison uh, of a VAS, change in sexual function, IPSS and QOL, and uh, the maximum flow rate at one and six months. And that's what, what we have seen. So in, in, at the baseline, all the variables considered with, were uh, absolutely homogeneous, so, which is good for uh, starting with the study. And then regarding to the primary endpoints, distribution of ejaculatory function assessed by the, the um, ejaculatory man cell quality uh, life remained unmodified after TPLA, while a median 30% decrease uh, was observed in the uh, TORP group. 
and uh, uh, absence of anti-grade er ejaculation was reported just in one case uh, out of 26 patients in the TPLA group and in 18 patients out of 25 patients in the TURP group. So with a, a very big difference as expected actually. And uh, statistical significant improvement was seen in both groups in terms of QMAX, IPSS, and QOL. Uh, as uh, we can obviously observe, uh, a net difference was between the two groups in terms of uh, post-operative uh, maximum flow rate with uh, uh, 15 uh, versus 26 TPLA versus TURP. No difference were found in terms of uh, um, erectile uh, dysfunction disorders. Uh, so in terms uh, of uh, perioperative results, a big difference in terms of time uh, have seen, and also we have seen a difference in terms of length of stay. Uh, but let me underline that basically these procedures may be conducted on outpatient basis. We have not done because the, uh, our system in Italy uh, pay a full reimbursement for the procedure only if the patient stay in the hospital for at least two days. Okay, so I don't know, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but that's what it is in Italy. Um, so uh, this is what happened exactly in my office. Uh, patient come, and if they are uh, BPH, they want to underwent or laparoscopic or robotic or laser procedures, okay? They used to ask for robotic surgery even if they want to, they have to be circumcised. So you have to explain them, you know, I think this is something that happened to everybody, you know? So they come in the office, and if I offer today a QRP, they are gonna change uh, urologist right after. So uh, they also want to be operated yesterday. And in my clinical practice, uh, if the patient wants to underwent a, 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 a BPH procedure, they have to wait in, in Italy at least two years before to get the procedures. So <laughs> this is a, a huge deal in Italy because the, the national health system, you know, they don't pay, so they won't. And also, uh, the most patient ask for ejacula uh, ejaculation sparing te technique, no matter, no matter at all how old they are. And I want to tell you a, fun, a funny story. So when I went in 2001 in John Hopkins uh, with Fernando uh, to do my, my fellowship program, Dr. Cavussi came to me and uh, he was doing a study regarding uh, reversal vasectomy. And he asked to me, hey Pierluigi, how many vasectomy do you perform per year? And then I said, Dr. Cavussi, what is vasectomy? <laughs> I didn't know at all, you know? <laughs> Actually, I knew, but you know, in Italy, it's a big, big deal. When you have to prospect the patient that they're gonna lose the, their ejaculation, they're gonna go crazy, you know? So we have to deal with this. But also we have to balance between what we know and patient expectation. So I, I want to call all these procedures, PI, RedZoom, uh, TPLA, uh, these are bridge therapy. We are not gonna uh, fix the problems of the patient for the eternity, but we can do uh, we can have good results. We have to explain to the patient that ejaculation sparing procedures may lead to good result, good outcomes, but temporarily. And in the future, we don't know how close it, it is. They may require a more extensive endoscopic treatment. So bridge therapy, we can have pretty good, pretty good uh, results in terms of uh, maximum flow rate, but we have to consider that we are living in place 80 up to 90% of prostate tissue there. So at the end, TPLA is a micro-invasive treatment. So the needle are very, very thin. It's a fast procedure basically on outpatient basis. We do not violate the urethra, which is very, very interesting to me. Because so in this way, we can avoid any kind of a urethral injury or, or future stenosis. We can treat large prostate up to 100 cc with no third lobe. I have no experience with the with third lobe. So TPLA allowed for maintaining ejaculation in 96% of cases, confirming to be a valid option in patients seeking for pairing the relief for, from BPO to the high probability of preserving ejaculatory function. So counseling with this patient is of paramount importance. So I wanna thank you for your attention.